life Whether you're ready or not Sometimes it's rough And it takes all that you've got But he's been here Just waiting for you to knock To take his hand Welcome to Life on the Rock. I'm Doug Berry, along with Father John Paul, who is again setting in for the other Rock House compadre, Father Mark, who is once again away on stealth mission, some covert operation somewhere on a battlefield in a far distant land. Very dramatic, I know. We have a full audience tonight. We've got a lot of great people here from, is it Fargo, North Dakota, Steve, that we're all from? Awesome. Good friend of mine, Steve Splonskowski, is uh, part of this group. Uh, Steve and I used to work together years ago in Radix, and here they are, a great crowd of people who've pilgrimaged down here to the network at uh, Irondale, Alabama. So we're happy that you're all with us here tonight. We've got a great show. We have Jim Orlino here from Navi's Pictures. We're going to be talking about his new movie, War of the Vendée. It's been out for quite a while now, but it's still fresh uh, for a lot of people, still getting to know this story, very, very important story. So we're going to talk to Jim and also three of the actors that were in the movie are with us as well. It's going to be a really good show. You know, and Father, speaking about war, you know, this is something i got to bring this up. You know, I started Battle Ready, you know, um, over a year ago. And I've had a uh, really tremendous response from a lot of people out there who say that it's been very helpful, encouraging them in the spiritual fight. That's what it's all about. Battle ready is about being spiritually battle ready. But there are those out there who hear the term battle ready and my website, battlereadystrong.com, and they, they think uh, it's too warlike. It uh, sounds too violent. It sounds too aggressive. And my response to that is it is warlike, but it's spiritual warlike. And I know you and I have talked a lot about this. We worked together in Rio together, you know. And a lot, yeah. And, uh, the, you know, you kept looking at me, you say, battle ready. That's right. Yeah. He was in one cab and I was in the other in the streets of Rio. And, and he's about to drive off. It's cabs are side by side. And he looked out the window and just, just mouthed I it. I just lipped it. Battle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it is about spiritual warfare. And I want to say this to everybody out there. If you feel uncomfortable with this, I'm just asking you to please prayerfully read this. The Word of God. A couple key verses. 1 Peter 5, 8. Be sober, be watchful, be alert, we're told, because the enemy is roaming around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him. Resist him. Solid. Solid. In your faith. In your faith. And in your face. Well, in his face, with your faith. That's right. There you go. That's right, yeah. Doug. And, you know, I, just to encourage um, the guys out there, sign up. Sign up for Doug's newsletter, Battle Ready. Um, you know, it, it is very inspiring. And, you know, you know, Doug, there are wars all over the place. Mm -hmm. You know, there's terrorism in the world. But where is really the real war going on inside the, the human heart? Mm -hmm. You know, each one of us has a, really a, a battle against uh, good and evil. Mm -hmm. You know, the battle to choose the good and to um, deny and to choose against the evil. We w always want to choose uh, the good. And um, that battle is within our own hearts. Mm -hmm. And St. Francis of Assisi would always say, you know, St. Francis wanted to be a herald. He wanted to be a knight. He wanted to go out and fight for Christ. Um, but, but the Lord had a different um, battle for Francis to, um, to carry out. It was a spiritual battle. He said, Francis, rebuild my church, <laughs> for as you can see, it is falling into ruin. And I told a bunch of young people today, I said, that phrase that the Lord said to Francis, Francis, rebuild my church, place your name within there. Doug, rebuild my church, for as you can see, it is falling into ruin. Mm -hmm. That every single one of us on our own front, it has to begin here. St. Francis said, if we're going to um, affect society, if we're going, it's all got to start here. We don't look out there so much. You know, we have to do that sometimes. And we have to make judgments. We have to call sin, sin. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to, you know, acknowledge where goodness exists. But at the same time, it all has to begin here. You know, if, if I want, if, if we want to, um, you know, 
rebuild and, and um, contribute to what John Paul II called the civilization of love mm -hmm. and life. Doug, it, you know, it has to begin here, yeah, within our own hearts. Those first battles, those first conflicts, those struggles within each of us, that's where we've got to be victorious. And that's yeah. only going to happen through prayer, through sacraments, through that encounter with God, through the reading of Scripture. Um, but we do need to realize that God Himself is very clear about the fact that we are at war. You know, Revelation 12, verse 7, Now war arose in heaven, Michael and his angels fighting against the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought, but they were defeated. And there was no longer any place for them in heaven. And the great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent who was called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth and his angels were thrown down with him. Down to the earth. We are contending with these demons. We are contending in this battle here on earth. It's clear in scripture. And it goes on to there, from there to the end of this verse, of this chapter, chapter 12, where the dragon is angry with the woman because he cannot get to the woman. He cannot devour the child, our lady. He cannot devour that woman or the child, our Lord. And so he goes off in a rage to wage war, it says here in Scripture, verse 17, against her offspring. And her offspring are explained and described as those who follow the commandments of God and bear witness to Christ. So we are in a battle. And as you said, Father, it starts inside the heart and the soul. It's the battle that, against the attacks of the world, the flesh and the devil, the temptations that we're told for centuries, for 2,000 years of our faith, we know these battles, these temptations, world, flesh, and devil are coming at us. Christ himself had to contend as the, the, the spirits, you know, uh, were, were tempting him, the devil tempting him, even in the desert when he prayed there for 40 days before, prayed and fasted before he got into his mission work. Well, Doug, it says in your shirt, you know, battle ready, established 33 AD, chains broken, death conquered. And Christ came to break the chains in every single one of us. Right. Chain of sin. You know, every single one of us has, you know, chains, attachments in life, addictions. Christ came to break those. You know, he doesn't, the Lord doesn't desire any of us to walk around all chained up and bottled up. Right. You know, so many people may be walking around and, um, you know, they may be fine on the outside, but spiritually they're cripples. Mm -hmm. You know, they're walking around limping. And every single one of us, we're in that battle, you know, and to let, you know, we need to let Christ break those chains in us. Well, I would think, Father, yeah. you know, you as a priest now being on the other side in the confessional, I mean, I know you have to go to confession as well, but you're on the other side now too. And, and a couple of priests are in the audience and anybody yeah. here, and some of you are a little older than me, a few of you, and, <laughs> and I'm just going to ask you the question here. Have any of you ever been to confession for the same thing over and over and over, and yet you keep going? You keep fighting that fight? You keep walking out of the confessional praying for the grace to not fall into those chains again? And yet we still battle these things. We are all fighting. And a lot of us start to lose that fighting spirit when we lose hope, when we get discouraged. And we don't want to do that. We, we find hope in the scriptures, we find hope in, in prayer. We find hope in the sacraments yeah. before our blessed Lord in, in adoration. We it, find it in our vocation and wherever God calls us to. You know, I have to say going to confession now as a priest, it's different. Mm. You know, um, as a priest now going to confession, you know, all, you know, all these years, you know, you go to confession frequently um, and receive the sacraments and just to hear those words, you know, I absolve you of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And now as a priest being on the other side and hearing confessions, hearing how sorry people are, hearing, hearing what the Lord is doing in their life to help turn their life around, it helps me to become a better penitent. You know, it, 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 you know I, I, I can honestly say the first time I went to confession as a priest, it was a totally different experience. You know, than any other time I went to confession. You weren't, you weren't, I, I was more sorry. You weren't critiquing the priest, were you? No, was, no. It, <laughs> you know, you know, Father, you maybe know, you could have said. You know, <laughs> you know the, the, just, just, I'm telling you, the, the people that, you know, just hearing people um, and, and them opening up themselves, how sorry they are and how mm. they want uh, to be right with God, it forces me, mm. you know, to look at myself and, you know, am I that sorry? You know? And, uh, you know, and it's just awesome. I can't, I can't say and that's, it. And I love it whenever you talk about this because you get kind of, you get this, this energy coming out of you. But you love fighting this fight, I know. We've talked about this. And, and you know, that's what the Tonight Show is all about, War of the Vendée. This, this was a battle that took place. Our brothers and sisters who sacrificed so much to defend the faith, to not give in to those attacks that were coming at them. 
And you know what? It, it's a sad situation because it shows that when, when, when the battle spiritually can overwhelm an individual, as it did the, the, the evil tyrants who, who started to attack the Catholic faith and shut down the churches and kill the priests, this is what happens when that spiritual element becomes manifest in a more physical way, such as abortion or practicing contraception or, or euthanasia or the attacks on marriage that are going on right now and presently in our world. But this is, a, this is a powerful story we need to know much more about, about our brothers and sisters who gave their lives in profession by their very blood, the faith that we are talking about and sitting here for tonight. So don't go away. We've got a trailer of this fantastic movie, and then we'll be coming back with Jim Merlino and more from Novice Pictures and War of the Bond Day. But check out this trailer before we leave. You're going to love this. Everything you knew, if everything you loved, if everything you held sacred, my Lord and my God, were taken from you. Good morning, Father. What would you do? Gather the men. The terror is about to be unleashed, gentlemen, the likes of which France has never seen. You cannot make peace with the devil. But how will we possibly defend ourselves? We have no army. Who will help us? They have killed our temporal king, and now they want to kill our heavenly king. Who is worth fighting for, or even dying for, if not him? My sons, the martyrs of old did not die expecting a fleeting victory in this world. They sacrificed their lives, hoping only for eternal victory in the next. Are you willing to do the same? The banners of the king go forth. The mystery of the cross shines, by which life bore death, and by dying gave us life. For God and King! Welcome back to Life on the Rock, full house tonight. We've got a lot of great people here from the Fargo, North Dakota area. Good to have them down here. I'm Doug Berry sitting along with Father John Paul, who's filling in for Father Mark, the other Rock House compadre. So you're an you're a honorary Rock House compadre, Father. I'm second place, but you know, hey. it's all right. <laughs> it's good to have you here, though. And we're with Jim Orlino. Jim, Hi, buddy. Yeah, we good go back a again. few years. You've yep. been on the show before when That's you were right. discussing the movie Bernadette. Bernadette that you had made. Um, novice Pictures is great. Now, you've got a unique um, approach here because you like to use youth. You like right. to really draw the youth in and get right. them involved in actual movie-making experience. I think W.C. Field said, uh, he was the one who said, never work with children or animals, right? And uh, <laughs> I, I didn't, I don't listen to that. I love working with young people and uh, they prove that adage wrong all the time mm -hmm. because they rise to the challenge. Mm -hmm. They, the, the kids that we work with uh, are innocent. 
they're faithful, they're energetic, they embrace this work and are happy to work very hard to make something for the glory of Almighty God. That's what yeah. we're doing. Well, and, and, and you're, you're picking such uh, gentle, easy stories too. Oh, yeah. 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 You know, yeah. You're, I mean, your last one, Bernadette, uh, that, that, that's, a, that's such a powerful story simply because, you know, you're talking about this, this miraculous event from heaven affecting this young girl at the time, uh, just four years after the Pope makes this declaration, uh, this declaration right. ex cathedra. Right. Right. But even there, you know, that's a story that doesn't need any setting up for most people. You mm -hmm. know, they, she's the most, one of the most beloved saints mm -hmm. in, in the calendar, you know, yeah. and everyone knows something about her story. Yeah. But this story is completely unknown. War of the Vendée, uh, the French Revolution. Revolution, 1793 time period. The revolution happened in 1789. And uh, most of, I venture to say, most of what our audience uh, knows about the French Revolution is probably not accurate. Uh, I'm sorry, but uh, I, you know, I went to Catholic schools, public schools, private schools, higher education. I consider myself fairly well read, and I hope I'm a fairly zealous Catholic and aware, and yet I hadn't heard a word of this story until about three years ago. What, what this is about is the relentless persecution of the church that happened in the aftermath of the French Revolution. In the years following the revolution, all the churches in France were closed. Mm -hmm. Give us, if you can, just, just uh, uh, kind of surmise a, a timeline for us. So it begins okay. in 1789. 1789, the okay. storming of the Bastille. The king is deposed, basically, and uh, is under house arrest for two years. And in that two and two and a half years, this uh, Robespierre and the architects of the revolution gained more and more power, consolidated more power among themselves and enacted laws. The king was a holy man, but he was a weak leader and he allowed his power to be taken away from him and uh, ultimately was executed. Uh, that was in January of 1793. But during this time, the, these several years, more and more and, 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 and more onerous laws were being passed. You know, the, the French, the revolutionary government changed every aspect, tried to erase every aspect of the church's influence in France, so much so that they changed the calendar. They did away with the seven-day week uh, and made it a 10-day week. Uh, they, 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 they did every kind of outrage you can imagine in the churches, the noble churches of France. They turned Notre Dame Cathedral into a temple of reason. Hmm. Uh, they, they took the bones of St. Genevieve and threw them in the street. They, they, like I said, they closed all the churches. They made the priests and nuns swear an oath of loyalty to this bloody revolutionary government and the Pope said no. Now, now some of the priests and nuns obviously did it and some didn't. Right. You know, that, that happens. You know, we've, you know, it's difficult moments and everybody's got to make a decision right. and obviously some made the wrong decision uh, and swore this oath and so forth. What happens to those who don't swear the oath? Who don't they become outlaws okay. and they go into hiding. And the good peasants throughout France, not just in the West, Vendée is a region of Western France, uh, but throughout there were revolts against all these persecutions. They only took hold in the Western part of France where the faith was especially strong. These people had a great love of Our Lady's Immaculate Heart, Our Lord's Sacred Heart. They loved their priests, they loved their mass, they loved their king. They had their faith especially strong because a saint you may have heard of uh, had preached in the area 70 years earlier, none other than St. Louis de Montfort. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. his influence was, was very, very I, strong. I have heard of him. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and, and so, you know, I mean, that's why they wore he this. He was a fighter, wasn't he? Well, yeah, yeah. They, they, that's why they wore this emblem of the Sacred Heart on their uniforms. So things got worse and worse and worse. Finally, the, the government decided uh, we're going to conscript an army of 300 of, of the men of France to go out and fight all the wars. Wars against nations who had declared war against France because of the anarchy that was reigning in Paris. Mm. So it, it's an amazing tale. What happened, they took up arms, they got to that boiling point, and yet they were fighting for the things that mattered for them the most. Like I said, uh, their faith, their churches, their priests and nuns who were being rounded up, Father, and executed by the thousands in the most gruesome ways you can imagine. And people need to know, too, that, that France has always had the, the title, historically, as the eldest, eldest daughter, daughter of, of the, the church. church. 
I mean, we've had how many amazing saints come from France? This, this is a very, very, very Catholic heritage uh, attached to, to right, France. Right, and so especially ironic that uh, so much of French, fr France's identity was, drawn, was, was tied up with the church and uh, was informed by the church and uh, the great cathedrals of Notre Dame, Chartres, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so it, it was, a, it was an, an epic tragedy. Finally, these people rose up and they fought back. They festooned their uniforms with rosaries. They put badges of the Sacred Heart on their uniforms. They picked up their pitchforks and they went out and they went up against incredible odds, Doug. And they won stunning victories in the first several weeks and months, so much so that they were poised to march on Paris. Their numbers swelled. They had uh, members of the nobility, uh, uh, you know, French, ex-French military who had fought in our American Revolution, now fighting for the church in their own country. It was, it's an amazing story. They, they were practically marching on Paris. They made a strategic error, decided to protect their rear flank, and everything fell apart. Then France had a, a chance to send everything they had against these people. They were ultimately defeated, and that wasn't enough. Then what began was a genocide, an out-and-out -out genocide against the people of Western France, the Catholics of Western France. And this France. is about, so, so 1793 to 96 roughly is when the war is taking place and when it's over by 96? About 94 and then 90, yeah, 94 and 95. This okay. is when they sent column after column after column of French soldiers throughout the countryside, burning every village, every farm, mm. uh, killing the livestock, poisoning the wells, violating the women, killing every man, woman, and child, priest, none they could find. Uh, experimenting with ovens and poison gas 150 mm -hmm. years before Hitler. And mm -hmm. we've never heard a word of this and, story. And this was after the war was, was officially, officially over. over. And, and, and some of the leaders were, were executed. And, All of them and were executed ultimately, yeah. Okay. So okay. the point is... But then, uh, they, they, but then they, they wanted, this was a genocide yep. of, 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 of Catholics. Half of the population of the Vendée region of France was eradicated. But the people kept fighting. Napoleon takes power in 1799, and he was a pragmatist. He was no friend of the church, Father. Uh, did, you know, little indiscretions like kidnapping the Pope, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah. Uh, but uh, he, he realized there Minor. would never be peace in France unless the people had their religion given back to them. So it was the sacrifices of these men and women to the tune of almost 300,000 who laid down their lives for Holy Mother Church that allowed for the restoration of freedom of France. And I thought, yeah, that would be a good story to tell. Yeah, so I that's think so, why yeah. we did it. And uh, you know, then people people say that's not really a good story to tell with children, but it is. Any story about truth, and beauty, and faith is a story worth telling with children through the eyes of children, and that's what we've done. You know, and this is something. I, this is really dear to my heart. I got to tell you because you know, the idea of having a fighting spirit, the idea of you know why I even started the whole battle ready initiative was to try to help ignite and wake up a fighting spirit. You're doing the same thing through this medium, right? It's because when we lose the fighting spirit, we're ready just to lay down and let anything happen. And when you talk about the fact that they, they ravage a countryside and try, to, and, and try to just basically eradicate all the Catholics and destroy anything and, and, and everything of resemblance to Catholicism out there, um, that sort of thing is happening in our world in a different way, in a subtle way, through media, through the, you know, what we're seeing in, in, in the press. Um, and, there, and this is a very, very serious push going on right now in our day and age. Yeah. And, and you said before the show, we talked <laughs> briefly about that, and you referred to what's happening to us now as being more insidious and even, even more covert, darker in some ways than what happened here because it's, right. not, it's not even so noticeable. Right, right. You know, we don't have a guillotine in the public square right now uh, cutting off anybody's head who doesn't swear allegiance to this bloody revolutionary mm -hmm. government. Uh, but we have these mandates that are going to force good Catholics to violate their conscience or go to jail. Mm -hmm. And then who knows where that's going to lead. So, and the, look at the way the Holy Spirit works, the way Divine Providence works. Three years ago, when I started working, when I discovered this story and started working on the script, I had nobody to heard of Obamacare. Hmm. And where are we now? Right. So, um, I, I think it's an amazingly timely story and one that I hope is inspiring for people, edifying for people, and I hope prepares us for whatever will come that yeah. um, and we know. do we, we need things such as this to strengthen us to give us encouragement to be to be brave courageous I think of Joshua chapter 1 verse 9 when God says through Joshua take I command thee take courage and be strong and do not be dismayed be not afraid I am with you wherever you go 
And this is a story that really speaks to that. We got our first clip here. Do you want to set it up or is uh, it easy to I go? don't know if I remember what it is. Maybe I can talk about it after it okay. runs. Okay. All right, this will give you a good idea of the power of this movie. Here's our first clip. You know what they say about good intentions. The road to... Others may travel that road, my friend, but not I. Perhaps with your German blood, you see things differently. But this is France. We love our God and our King. And our wine. And as long as we have those, we shall have peace. Here, yeah, here, yeah, well said. A toast. A toast, my friends, to the newest child of God and son of France. Heir to all my incredible wealth and fortune. <laughs> my son, Nicolas Catalineau. And to my beautiful wife, Nisette, who has by bearing me these priceless gifts from God and giving me the treasure of her love, made me the richest man in all the Vendée. And to our suffering king, that he be granted the strength to endure the indignity and injustice of his imprisonment and lead his people to a new day of peace and freedom. To the king! <laughs> and finally, to Almighty God, that his holy church be preserved and that his priests continue to guide us on the path to heaven. To our God! <laughs> So that's what these people were about. You know, the, the purpose of that scene is, is like uh, the beginning of Lord of the Rings to show the Shire, you know? Mm -hmm. it, it was in a sense like the Shire. These were happy poor, hardworking, salt of the earth people who, who loved, like I said, their king. They had allegiance to their king. They loved their priests. They loved their families. They loved the expression of their faith. They loved their mm -hmm. simple understanding of the Catholic faith. And all of that was going to, was just about to be taken away from them. Mm -hmm. So this is a scene early on in the movie where Paul right there is giving that speech. And um, uh, it, it, it's, it was a powerful, it's even powerful for me to watch it now. And I've probably watched it more than anybody on the planet. Now we're only gonna have you for about five, six more minutes. And what? And I uh, know. And then we've got a guillotine in the back. We're taking no. you out. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> They've had enough of you. No, they're the stars. But they're going to bring them up yeah. after the break here. But while we still got you, I, 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 you know, we, we've talked in the past, Jim, you and I, about what it's like to work with the young people. And, and my hope with a show like this is not just that people would watch it and say, well, that was a nice show. Look right. at that nice man doing that nice thing for those nice kids, putting on a nice movie about a nice historical something or another that happened in the past that just doesn't really have anything to do with me today. Right. What can you say to the listeners yeah. and the viewers right now um, throughout the world who are seeing and hearing this program about really how this isn't really that far removed and not just because we've got government issues now that we see certain resemblances, but really it's about the heart of man, about the heart of each one of us. Yeah. It, and, and our allegiance to truth. There's a lot going on here, Doug. And, and I am, it's a, you know, yeah, I started the company I wrote the script, so Navi's Pictures is me, in a sense, and my wife and my kids, but I am continually amazed at how much bigger it has become than anything I ever dreamed of. Partly because of their work, because of prayers from thousands and thousands of people, but in, an, in the nutshell, what's going on here is we're celebrating the creativity of young Catholics and inspiring them and hoping to, hoping to instill in them a love for the arts and, and a realization of the importance of the arts and how important cinema especially is in our culture, how influential it can be, and how it's Catholic young people who should be in Hollywood. It's Catholic young people who should be the actors, the writers, the directors, the producers, the musicians, bringing the beauty and truth of the Catholic faith to bear on a culture that is in desperate need of those things, mm -hmm. is in desperate need of the church, doesn't know it yet, might be in denial of that yet, but uh, can only benefit from these young people growing up and taking their energy and the gifts God's given them to, to bring this culture back to sanity. So that's kind of the overarching goal of what we're doing. And it's especially interesting that we've, we're treating a topic that is especially timely today. So it, all of these things are actually connected. So if, if the young people can be the leaven in the culture, if they're going to take the gospel out, if they're going to transform the culture for Christ, then we might not be facing the kinds of issues that we're facing mm. today with government intrusion on our religion. So it's a lot of things going on at the root of it all. It's a, it's a wildly entertaining film, if I do say so myself. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it, you can buy it from uh, uh, EWTN Religious Catalog, and it's going to be airing here too. Uh, it, it's, uh, it, it, it aired last um, 
October, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it'll be airing soon. I'm not sure of the schedule, but um, uh, I hope people enjoy it, and I'm, I'm hoping that we can do more films with young well, folks. There's absolutely no question that we, we are in need of inspiration. We're, we're a people that love stories and inspiration. Christ taught and te you know, teaches through scriptures, through stories so often. You know, that's, it's a major part of, of him conveying truth to us. And this is important because it reminds us of those who've gone before us and fought and even died for the faith that we have. Right. And that can't be taken lightly. You know, we think we're so civilized and yet, you know, we're slaughtering, you know, how many millions of babies worldwide, but in, in America alone, mm -hmm. you know, we've got the most powerful nation in the world in so many ways, as Blessed Mother Teresa said, the richest resource-wise, the poorest spiritually mm -hmm. in many ways. We, we have, though, the opportunity and the power, the ability, the gifts, the talents to do amazing things, amazing things. I'm going to ask everybody out there listening and everybody in the audience, you know, step up the prayers. Let's all step up the prayers a bit more mm -hmm. for the young people who are involved in these projects. You know, what you're doing here, Jim, is really what Pope Francis, you know, Father, when you and I are in Rio, that's one thing we, we kept talking about with Father Mark, Father Miguel and the others, you know, Jill and Jody and the others down there is that, um, you know, Pope Francis would make that relation that the elderly, the older generations must, we have an obligation yeah. to pass on to the younger generations wisdom and culture and teaching and faith and courage. We have a, a duty, and that's, that's essentially what you're trying yeah, to do. Yeah, I mean, my days are numbered here. Look at me. I'm, my beard is getting grayer every day. Talk about battle. It's a battle for me to remember what I have for breakfast yeah. in the morning. <laughs> so these are the ones who are going to, they're going to be the next generation of the church. They're going to be the ones to carry uh, the torch and, and make some real, real changes and, uh, and to bring the gospel and, and, and to transform the culture. So I'm, I'm, it's an honor and a privilege for me mm -hmm. to encourage that in any way I can. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. um, uh, th it's 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 a lot of fun too, and uh, and we've won the the film has already won several. Yeah, real awards. quick before we let you go here, uh, tell it's us an about award the two I awards. don't talk about too much, and I hope it's not false humility, Father. But the best director, the the movie won from the John Paul II International Catholic Film Festival last Great. year, and the, the especially uh, proud of the award best film for young audiences from the Mirabile Dictu International Catholic Film Festival, headquartered at the Vatican. It's the closest thing we have to a Vatican film festival and we won an award and I share that with all of these, mm. these guys and 250 of their closest friends who are also in the movie. So uh, kudos to all of them. Well, we're going to run to a break, but Jim, will you be with us after the break? So yep. thank you very much, God my bless. friend. Thanks. Good to have you. Thanks. We'll be back after this Thanks. with three Thanks. of the Thanks. actors Thanks. from Thanks. War of the yeah. Day. Don't go away. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to Life on the Rock. Father, Mar or Father John Paul and I just doing the battle ready fist bump from across the room here. That's right. right. We have three of the actors from War of the Vendée with us. We have Paul Riley and Kathleen and Brian Murphy, brother and sister. And Paul, you're 17, correct? Yes, sir. Absolutely. And you are 19? Yes, I'm 19. And you're, you're 32? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 21. 21. Uh, okay. The senior in uh, Thomas Aquinas College. Yeah. Okay, oh yeah, Thomas Aquinas, and you're yeah. at Aquinas too, correct? Yes, yeah. Okay, and you are discerning the priesthood, right? Yeah. Well, I'm just asking. <laughs> <laughs> I leave it in God's hands. Okay, <laughs> hold really on. Safe answer. He's talking to me right now, Paul, and he's telling me to tell you to leave it in his hands. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> I think it's a good bet. All right, well good to have you guys on the show. Uh, Thanks, Mr. Jonas. How many movies have you done now with, uh, with Mr. Molina? Two. Too. You're yeah, both in, you were all three in Bernadette yeah. then as well? You we were, yes. Yeah. Okay, all right. So you're older now. That, how many years ago was Bernadette done, Paul? Oh, Bernadette. Oh, my. Must be about five years ago now. Yeah, five years. Okay. And you got fond memories of putting that one together? Yeah, it, it was definitely a, uh, a very positive experience as a child to uh, be in these theatrical productions and experience uh, certainly inspirational stories of the saints. Right. Right. Kathleen, what do you remember best about Bernadette? 
You know, that was when we first started to get involved with Navi's pictures, so um, we kind of jumped in halfway through our family for some of the bigger scenes where they needed more people, and mm -hmm. um, I just remember the community was amazing, just, um, yeah, with all of these kids who we didn't really know very well, and they were just really welcoming, and it was just an amazing experience to see all these kids working together to... Now, did you all have, and Brian, you can answer this one since you're the oldest one here on the stage, <laughs> apart from Father and I. The widest. Uh, did you have any problem renegotiating contract type yeah, arrangements no, that was with tough. Jim? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I said I wanted a bigger raise. Yeah. I wanted a, at least a couple million. And he said what? Uh, he, well, it took some negotiating, but he <laughs> said absolutely not. So <laughs> we did it anyway. Yeah. He did it anyway. Yeah. Right, right, right. We say that he doubled our salaries. No, okay. Yeah. So you wanted more than nothing. Got, we got yeah, we wanted that. more than nothing. <laughs> yeah. <You got> paid. <laughs> and then you got double nothing. Yeah, and then we got, yeah. So it was great. Twice as much nothing as the first yeah. show. All right, that's good. All right. Well, no, so we, I mean, we do joke about that, but we um, the experience that we got out of it was mm -hmm. such a unique thing, especially for kids. N no, no kids. I don't. I mean, I, I don't think any kids have experienced what we've gone through, and it's just, it's just all of it. it. It's, it's amazing. We've all done a lot of acting and plays in our homeschooling group and stuff, but filming with a camera in your face is totally different. And there's just all these little things that you never know about. Um, that go on behind the scenes when a movie's being made. And I'm just, personally, I feel very blessed um, having that experience and just, yeah, it was, it was really wonderful. Right. Yeah. And it's got to feel good, too. I mean, Kathleen, you can speak to this then. Um, knowing that what you're doing is something of real substance as opposed to, there's a lot of movies out there you could say that are worth just never being shown or seen again. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of junk out there Something like this, you got to be able to feel good, don't you? You put your head on the pillow at night knowing that you were involved in a project that really has some good substantial quality to it. Yeah, most definitely. Because you're, I mean, you're putting in so much energy and work and you're learning so much, but at the same time, yeah, you realize that what you're working towards is something that you can just offer to God and give to Him almost like a prayer, mm -hmm. as much fun as it is. And after you pass away, you know, whenever that may be, hopefully not for a long time, you're all very young, <laughs> But uh, something like this still floating around out there, still affecting people in a very positive way, encouraging them down the road, you know, years and years from now. I'm curious, how has this um, increased your prayer life? You know, any one you can answer, maybe each one you would quickly, but, you know, it, it's not really a, I wouldn't say formative experience in the way that it informs your faith rather than your faith informs your acting. Mm -hmm. And it's an experience similar to the way we experience saint stories mm -hmm. you know reading the lives of the saints is motivational and participating in this and really experiencing or even taking the role of a saint or mm -hmm. a martyr is a very powerful thing and you really feel a very strong connection with that saint's experience yeah. I think it was also really faith inspiring too because a lot of the kids who we worked with, you, we've known them for so many years and I mean you've seen them on plays but you've never seen anything like the acting that they're able to do and it seems mm -hmm. like the situation just kind of appeared where you have all these kids and Mr. Molina was there you know, talking to us and he just drew these talents and abilities out of us that I just mm -hmm. had no idea existed. Yeah. So I don't know, it was just so cool to see what God just able to just draw out of all these mm -hmm. kids. It was really neat. What kind of uh, stories can you tell us, Brian, about about Jim? <laughs> <laughs> um, where to begin? Yeah. Um, Mr. Molino is great. We really everyone back home loves him. Uh, great guy, super patient. A lot more patient than I would be if I had to deal with 200 kids. And <laughs> he yelled sometimes, but it was always um, called for <laughs> at that point. It was very infrequent. It was very infrequent. Right. Um, <laughs> great director. I don't know how he did it. Um, just not only, just a great, I mean, he's definitely not, we're not on peer level, but he's a great friend. You know, <laughs> just a great guy. Um, yeah, don't really, unfortunately, don't have any embarrassing stories about him. Maybe you guys can remember some. All right, well, let's just go yeah. to a break then. If there's no embarrassing stories, <laughs> what's the purpose of talking about how great he is if we're not going to talk about some of the juicy stuff? I'm just kidding. No, um, yeah, Jim and I have talked a little bit off and on, you know, I mean, and, and uh, you know, I, he and I are similar in the sense that there's that drive and that fire inside just to, yeah. to shake things up, make things happen. Yeah, that's Whatever medium and talent God gives you. Yeah, one, yeah, one last thing is he, he has this energy. 
yeah. that I've rarely seen in any other person where he just goes and he goes and goes and goes and he doesn't sleep and I don't know how he does it. But it's coffee. Coffee, coffee. <laughs> yeah, coffee. The other and thing too is I, I know he knows how to enjoy life and just love life. I remember there was this one day when um, it started to pour thunder. We were in this huge field and we were all in costumes. 200 it was kids. Like pour rain yeah. and it was lightning and thundering and um, they're kind of crawling us into like a covered area and a couple of us escaped and we were just like, can we run around in the rain? And he was like, definitely. And we just took off, and it was yeah. it was just so much fun, and I just really appreciated that. And you lost three that day that. due to the lightning, right? Yeah, yeah. but you know it was really yeah. fun. Totally so. struck down, but you know it's yeah. all for the movie. Yeah. It sounds like he's doing what Pope Francis uh, told us in World Youth Day, Doug. Right. You know, go make a mess, shake things up. Yeah. You know, yeah. you know, and use your talents. Fun. You know, and that's what you ex mm -hmm. you said. I mean, he drew out things that you never knew that you could do. Yeah. You know, and that, yeah. that's what. And, we're, and we got a clip to see some of that yeah. that you guys could do, and it's a clip of you two in it. Anything you need to do, set it up, Paul? Or just want to watch it and talk about it? Let's after. watch and talk it after. Let's watch and talk yeah. after. <laughs> All right, uh, one of our clips here from War of the Vendee with the illustrious Paul and Brian. This would be no ordinary war, my friends. We would not be fighting for land or gold or nation. They have killed our temporal king. And now they want to kill our heavenly king. Who is worth fighting for, or even dying for, if not him? They will need help. What say you, father? My sons. The martyrs of old did not die, expecting a fleeting victory in this world. They sacrificed their lives, hoping only for eternal victory in the next. Are you willing to do the same? You know, watching the clip, and hearing that, let, let's get to the nitty gritty now. All right, it was a great experience. You're working with a lot of young people and you got a great cohesive group and you're telling a story of something that happened a long time ago. You guys are going to Aquinas College right now and you're seeing what's unfolding in our country and in our time and in our world as a whole. Yeah. Faith is declining in a lot of areas and I'm not a doom and gloomer, I'm just a realist. Let's look at the lay of the battlefield, let's not water things down. We know, otherwise Pope Francis wouldn't be speaking the way he has been speaking about getting out into the streets but don't let the church turn in on itself. You know, don't let your faith be diminished, but go out there and be missionaries. And yet we're seeing some real serious, some real serious struggles in multiple areas. Brian, let's start with you. Because of what you said on there. Yeah. About being willing to lay our lives down and die. And here we are living in a time right now where, you know, people are losing their jobs, their businesses are being shut down because they won't support, you know, the attack on marriage in some of these areas these things are just continuing to steamroll. Yeah, well, the, to start with, that was, that was my favorite line that I had in the whole movie. I thought it was relevant then. I think it's relevant now. I think it's relevant to any Catholic anywhere. Um, there's, there's many ways to die for the faith. I think, I think in a way, um, everyone, every Catholic is a martyr, whether that means uh, you're a priest and you're not physically martyred, but you get up every day five in the morning, you pray, you, you live a life of penance, or you're a mom, and you've got ten kids, and you've got to work, and watch out for them, and it's just like, I mean, not to be depressing, but life is suffering, and that's how it's supposed to be, and there's, I think everyone is, everyone is going to be martyred in one way or another, and, and it's, it's, it's hard, but like, like you said, and like you said earlier, we live in a world today where it's a lot less obvious, the persecutions are a lot more subtle, and that does make it scarier. Mm. And it is something we all have to be aware of, because I think a lot of people aren't even aware of it yet. And, and once you're made aware of it, you do have to take a stand, ultimately. And hopefully that doesn't, I mean, you know, who knows, but hopefully that can be done through prayer, fasting, and just living the Catholic life. But I, I, I personally believe there comes a point where you do have to take a physical stand and just and say enough is enough, and you can't go against your 
faith and morals. And I think, you know, what you're talking about, I think is, is, is right on. I think when we're seeing cases and we're all hearing in the news of, you know, the Baker in New Mexico or the florist in Washington or what other area where their businesses have been decimated due to some sort of legal action under the, 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 the word discrimination because they're not going along with the system, uh, you know, yeah. the, the whole gay marriage approach or, mm -hmm. or some of these issues. You know, the HHS mandate, which is rampant, and we know these things are upon us. EW10 has been in, in the midst of lawsuit as well. I mean, this is happening across the board. You both talked about how if uh, the mandate, if something doesn't change. The, Our school will be shut down. Yeah, yeah. Aquinas could be shut down. Yeah. And I believe what's going to happen a lot is that we Catholics are going to have to, we Christians of all denominations are going to have to start stepping up for one another and start reaching out, yeah. opening homes, opening hearts, maybe opening wallets to help each other out more. We've got to get this message out and we've got to have our hearts enlivened by this. You know, we've got to be yeah. aware, we've got to prepare, we've got to engage. We've got to be aware, we've got to prepare, we've got to engage in this stuff. You know, Kathleen, how do you feel about being part of a story like this and then seeing the world we're living in now. What are your thoughts on it? Um, yeah, it's really interesting. One thing that strikes me about the story is that they have the Sacred Heart lapel on them all the time. Mm -hmm. And I just think that's really important because finally it just reminds you of Christ's heart and love of God and that's you know, singly the most important thing in life and that whatever trials come and whatever happens in life you have to love God. And sometimes that might um, require you to take a stand and to fight, but yeah, you just have to love. Now, there's a line in the movie um, and I forget which girl says it. Um, it's in the trailer. I noticed in the trailer when she says very firmly and, and sternly, get the men or call the yeah, men. Gather the men. Gather the men. Is it because she needs help moving the big pot from one stove to another? Or what, what is she? <laughs> sorry. What is she saying at that point? I mean, I know what she's trying to say, but what, yeah. as a woman, I mean, she wants the men to stand up, right? Yeah, she's supporting yeah. them and saying that we need to fight at this point to defend our our religion yeah. and our faith. And this is an area where I think you ladies really, oh, the power that you women have, especially over us men. You make or break us. Am I right, guys? Yeah. I mean, you hold us <laughs> right here. Our hearts are right here in your hands. For good or bad, a woman can make or break a man. And, you know, my wife from across the room with a tone of voice and a look <laughs> can make or break me. And I mean that in a good way, but that's the power of it, isn't yeah. it? I've been traveling for 25 some years now and I call home, how are you doing sweetheart? In two words, I'm fine. It's not the words, it's the tone behind the words. <laughs> you, know, but you ladies, when you ladies say we need the men to stand up and fight for us, we men are wired to fight for you ladies. You know, as Archbishop Fulton Sheen said, venerable Archbishop Fulton Sheen, the, the nobler a woman is, the nobler a man will be. When a woman raises her nobility mm -hmm. and raises her faith and her dignity and elevates, men are wired to follow and pursue to win the heart of a woman. So I love that line that that was in there, and I'm, I'm glad Jim wrote that in there because I, I just think that's uh, that's powerful. I don't know if that was actually if you found that somewhere in a history book, but or did you come up with that on your own, Jim? Is that all by, my all by yourself? <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. The women rally the men because we want to fight for you, ladies. What do you say to ladies out there, uh, Kathleen? Young ladies now in the world who may not see what's going on, especially when it comes to the battle and marriage, and how you ladies have so much to do with elevating the beauty and dignity of marriage. Um, yeah, I guess just to stay strong and be virtuous and, yeah, stay faithful to the sacraments and pray and just do the best you can. And expect the persecution that's going to come. We got another clip here. We'll come back from this clip. I want to get to you, my friend, and your thoughts on this whole what's going on in the world situation. We got another clip here with Paul and Kathleen. Check this out, ladies and gentlemen, from War of the Vendée. Be afraid, my love. God, for whom I shall fight, will protect you. As he will you.
He looks good. He looks like a soldier, Mama. He is, my dear. He is. So, Paul, do you feel like a soldier? You know, not as, not as much as I should, I think. I should feel more, you know, more of a soldier for Holy Mother Church than I do, but I try. So I think, I think you know, you're at that great age, and I think every young man at one time or another, and even we adult men as we get older, there's that fighting spirit. And as we get older, especially for us men, you know, you start breaking down, the knees don't work as well, the shoulders don't work as well, and you might feel like you can't fight as well, but ultimately, spiritually, we can be a better fighter then than we can even when we had all the, you know, yeah. the health and the vigor, because the deepening of our faith makes us a better warrior for God, a better fighter for God. What message do you have? 17 years old, young man, took part in a very, very powerful, very important movie, very important story, part of history to know. And then we'll ask you too as well as we wrap up the show. It's got a few minutes left here. What message do you have for the listeners and the viewers all over the world who are paying attention to this right now? I would just encourage them to look to the example of these martyrs and, and see the, the heroic sacrifice they made for the church and not to be afraid to, to make the same sacrifice because it's really what our faith is about. Yeah, very good. Not to be afraid to make that same sacrifice. Kathleen, what message do you have for all out there about really being willing to put it on the line for God. Yeah, I think what you said about um, how we all want something to fight for is really important. How everybody, especially at our age, really longs for something to just um, live for and to focus on and to give ourselves entirely to. And there's really nothing more noble or honorable than to dedicate our lives to the church and to Christ. That's good. That's excellent. Nothing more noble or honorable. Brian, the yeah. oldest of the three. Oldest. <laughs> um, yeah, just going off what Kathleen said about Every young person, man or woman, hits a point where they want to dedicate their lives and give it to something. And uh, I, I was just remembering a quote from um, Pope Francis, and he, he was just talking about how we need ordinary saints. We need saints who love hanging out with their friends, love listening to music, love going to the beach, love eating a hot dog, love just being themselves, but also just love the Eucharist. And, and, and I think it's important to remember because this movie, um, is that men put in extraordinary situations and sometimes we forget that we're waiting for that you know when when my moment comes you know I'll, I'll be able to do something extraordinary mm. but what what it's important to remember is that just by living your life happily full of love love for God and friends and family that um, that's that's a great way to be a saint that's the best way to fight the fight. Yeah. And truly battle ready is to live with joy and faithfulness to the church and to keep persevering through. All three, a great job. And Thank to you. Mr. Morlino, Jim, good job. Kathleen, yeah. distant fist bump. Distant Boom. fist bump. All right. <laughs> right. Distant fist Got it. All right. Battle, battle ready. ready. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, check out War of the Vaughn Day. You're going to love this movie. And uh, pray for these young men and women, and all who are involved in Catholic media, the importance of these stories, these projects getting out there. Support them however you can. Uh, Novice Pictures, Jim Merlino, and all the work he's doing. Keep your eyes open, pray for him, support him, and let's be those true warriors. That battle begins, as Father John Paul mentioned, in the heart first with each and every one of us. Be faithful to God. Prayer, sacraments, and service. Words of Pope Francis at World Youth Day. Let's take it to the streets. Father, as only you can take us out. All right, I want to hear a thunderous response. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he turn his face to you and be merciful to you. May he show you his kindness and give you his peace. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. We'll see you all next week.